Well, hello and welcome to this month's live critique. Hope you're all doing well. How are you two guys doing? I know Matt's kind of had a rush to get back last night, didn't you, buddy? Yeah, London closed down. Mm. Yeah, nightmare <laughs> due to the weather, eh? Yeah, it's like um, we left it. Oh god, past ten o'clock or something last night. We should have left at five. Um, yeah, and it was just a crazy blizzard. It's like minus ten and. Yeah, yeah. The airport shut down, and um, we were luck one of the lucky ones to take off. I don't know what happened there, but we um, I, I still actually still know people that are stuck over there and still sleeping in the airport right now. So, oh really? I was lucky to get home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm oh, glad God. you got back, mate. Glad you got back. <clears throat> yeah. How's about yeah. you, Tom? Well, well, it's not quite minus ten. It's about more like minus five, and it's still so it's the, the mornings are nice. Um, but yeah, it's cold. Yeah, it is mm. cold. Yeah, a little bit of snow this morning, but nothing, nothing to shout about. If I'm honest, um, but yeah, it's yeah. nice. We're not getting so much up here, to be honest. You'd think up further north it would yeah. be, be worse, but we're not getting any really. We haven't got any snow. It's freezing though. I mean, it's it's about minus six or seven at the minute. Good God! And that's just oh, in the um, house. <laughs> that's in the house. <laughs> I've got no heating. I've got no heating at the minute. So literally, you know, we've got the stove going. That's it. You've got no heating? No, no. Well, the oil ran out and the heating, I've just managed to get it fixed. Um, oh, wow. But the, the water's not working at all, but the heating's going to work. But we've had to order oil. Um, so that's coming on Wednesday. So, yeah, we've got nothing at the minute. Just the stove. True. Oh, bringing it back. He's bringing it yeah, back. Yeah. Bringing it back. And a meter thick the mango walls in well, this house as well. <laughs> I've just got a fireplace. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've got our, our heating broke about yeah, three, months, said, eh? three months ago. So we've just got the fireplace now. The fireplace is not keeping the house warm. It's keeping the living room warm. So it's just, yeah. yeah. That's what it was like when we were kids, wasn't it? You went to... I exactly. Know, maybe, I don't know if it was with you guys, but it wasn't me. And it, actually, it still is now. If you go to my parents' house now, you've still got to... Hop into bed with your tracksuit pants on and yeah, hoodie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it's yeah. like at the minute. That's yeah, what it's like yeah. Minute. Going to the kids' bedroom and you just see your breath. <laughs> <laughs> Con- conveniently brings us into the theme for this month's life critique, doesn't it? It does yeah. exactly yeah. into yeah. the uh, into the winter theme. Mm. Uh, just before we go any further, William says snowmageddon in London. Um, <laughs> C. Gurrier says good afternoon from Florida. Florida. Hope you're doing How you well. Doing? How you doing? doing well. I hope you're warmer than here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I reckon it probably will in Florida, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're on to this month's live critique, which is uh, the theme winter, and we've had lots of submissions again this month. It's been really good to see that the people are participating more and getting involved. Before we crack on with this month's theme, I want to give you a theme for January. And I thought, as I posted today an image um, with reflections, I thought it would be a good theme to uh, come up with for January because as the new year comes in, people reflect on the past year. So I thought reflections is a good way to go. It's very um, deep, isn't it, mate? Yeah, yeah it well, is deep. Go, eh? yeah. Every now and then it, it does He's happen, not mate. just a pretty face, is it? Eh? You're getting More in touch with your that. sensitive side, aren't you? Yeah, very, very, mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to do it once a year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your missus came up with that idea, didn't she? I know it. No, she didn't, actually. Uh, no. <laughs> no. After you went... No. After you went and got that haircut today, mate, you thought you'd get in touch with the <laughs> side. Oh, that was that was the day before yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was it? What did you hairdresser shave your eyebrows or something? Yes, yeah, you... <laughs> the whole lot, the whole lot, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Off. Yeah, yeah. I needed to because yeah. I was looking like um... like me, like me. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. It was as bad as that, but it was like oof. I was looking. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so uh, there you go. So, yeah, I thought uh, reflections would be a good one to uh, to go with for January. So if you get mm, your um, get your images in for January, you've got plenty of time mm. now to get them in um, using the hashtag OPG critique. And, yeah, it's going to be reflections for January. Mm. So on to the first image then. I think we'll crack on with the first image, which was uh, the theme winter. And seeing as I've mm. got this one up on my screen, we shall bring oh, yeah. this one up. And this one was Patty Reed. 
Yeah. I just need yep. to, if I can get this thing to go full screen for whatever reason, it doesn't want to do it. There we go. Hmm. And there you go. Great subject. It is. Mm. Icicles are always fun to uh, to photograph, eh? Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think for me with icicles, it's sometimes the background that they're against is is almost as interesting as the icicles themselves. Even if it's just the colour palette that sets them off. Yeah. Look, and it's yeah. quite... Yeah, so sorry, it's quite... Man. No, no, you go. Sorry. I was just going to say it's quite unusual because usually you see um, icicles with a cold colour palette. Whereas, <laughs> that's just that's, yeah, that's just literally what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. these are yeah. quite warm. Yeah, it is, yeah. And I think it's because they're kind of, I don't know whether they're side lit or back lit a little bit with, uh, with some sun coming in there, but it's yeah. given them a really nice warm tone. I must admit, if the uh, I don't know where where this was shot, but up, down in my woods, there's still a lot of a lot of leaf leaves on the on the trees. Like yeah, yeah. Cop, copper brown. And I can imagine you could get quite a a warm background if it's you know what I mean if it's around the woods at, by my place. Mm, I understand what yeah, you mean. Yeah. A lot of those the backlit leaves that sort of give it that um yeah that warm tone to it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, real, real sort of copper color now, aren't they? But it'd be um, interesting to who took this image, Paul. Um, it is Patty. Let me come out of here. Uh, Patty Reed. Patty Reed. Okay, Patty, if you're on, mate, be interesting to to hear a bit of feedback about um where you took this image, the conditions you're in, etc. Um, yeah, it's um, it's, it is an interesting subject, isn't it? I, I've, yeah. I've I've had experience in taking shots pretty much identical to this. Um, mm. In um, in like this this area, the side of a cliff where there's all like this moss coming off. Yeah. It was like an area that never hit the sun, and mm. it was very very cold winter. So all the rain and the and the drips of water that were coming off the off the um off the moss there sort of you know froze in time and created these these icicles. And there was yeah, hundreds yeah. of them. Um, and yeah. Uh, it's, it's it is a very exciting, interesting subject to to take. Obviously, I was sort of shooting towards towards the moss itself, yeah. And so my my, my background was a sort of a, a greeny tone, but yet at the same mm -hmm. time very very cold. This is taken towards some form of background. I think maybe a little bit too warm. Um, maybe your sensor might have picked up a bit too bit too much of that white warmer white balance in the background mm. because yeah normally that ice would all that would reflect a little bit would be a little bit cooler this would be a yeah, good opportunity yeah. to sort of do some local um yeah. some local changes to white balance in in photoshop no obviously not go overboard but sort of balance mm. it out a little bit sometimes it just this is an example where white balance can white balance isn't always general is it it's not it's not no. it's not um it's not global it can be localized to certain areas of a scene, whether your shadows or shadows or highlights. Normally, shadows yeah. are, are cooler, highlights are a little bit warmer. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's a great subject. I like the selective selected depth of field. It's interesting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's selective focus on that that one mm. that one icicle, just this one here. I think it's uh, it's really quite nice because mm. your attention's yeah. drawn to to it straight away. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yep. It's not in the yeah, centre. So... It's sort of set off to the left a little bit. It gives it a very interesting composition. Yeah, I really, I really like it. Yeah, and I think I'm, I'm not. I think I'm right in saying if you look in that that one that's behind it, it's all it's reflecting that same one in that. Uh, yeah, in that I was looking at that. Yeah, because it's got it's a very to... similar shape. So yeah. I think it's actually reflecting in it, which is quite quite cool. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I can work out whether it's someone behind or yeah. Or I didn't think about that. I think it mm. probably is a reflection, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Either way, I think it works well because it kind of mimics the one in front. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Really nice, nice. bouquet. Yeah, lovely little intimate yeah, nice shot, bouquet, isn't it? Yeah, mm. yeah. Good shot. And it's it's the only intimate shot we've actually got this week. It's the only one we've put in because we've been doing quite a few of them. So we thought we'd uh, change it up a little this week, eh? Mm. Yeah, mix it up. 
yeah, but that's a lovely, lovely start and a lovely image, I think. Yeah, good on you, mate. Yeah, good on you. It's nice to see them. Nice one, Patty. Well done. So we'll move on to the next one. I'll just do them in an order. I've got them up here. And this is called Zen of Winter by T Venue. Let me get off of my screen a minute. Mm. Where are we? There we go. There we are. Yeah. It's dreamy. It's, nice. it's dreamy and it's really soft, isn't it? The whole thing's soft. Mm. Yeah, it is soft. It In is. fact, it's so soft, I don't actually know where where the focus point is. No, I was looking at this earlier and I couldn't really work out where where am I where where am I supposed to, where am I supposed to, where are you supposed to look? It's like mm. um, I think I think the focus um, the focus point that's you know how it's being captured are definitely the trees. If you if you look in that immediate foreground, that those rock formations yeah. at the bottom there, they yeah. look a tad they look a tad soft, don't they? They're yeah. not yeah, quite, they are soft, they're, yeah, they're not that sharp. Um, no. Yeah, look. A reason why I, I I wanted to talk about this image this evening is because I, I look at it and um, immediately I see it. It grabs my attention. Mm. You know, mm. it's got a lovely atmosphere. Um, it grabs your attention instantly. But then you look at it mm -hmm. and you start studying it. Someone who's not going to just drag through the Instagram account. Account. Someone's yeah, yeah. actually going to stop and say, "Okay, let's look at this image." And that's what we've done with this group. You know, we're not dragging through these images and giving them half a second. We're looking at them, yeah. analysing each individual one, and then we're picking ones for discussion. We're not saying that they're the best images of the day, mm -hmm. the worst images of the day. They're just images that we would like to bring up for discussion that, are, yeah. you know, just, that make it interesting. Well, I think it's also the most helpful to do that, because <coughs> well, if we're just going to pick good images, nobody's going to get anything from it. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah. Well, it's also about, yeah. well, it's also about you know, bringing up examples because we want to talk about certain aspects of images on that day yeah. and some image might just have that example that we want to discuss. Mm -hmm. And I think with this one, this is a classic example. It grabs your attention. You think, lovely, really, really like it. Look at it yeah. for more than a second. And then I start seeing a lot of issues with it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> mm. Me too. Yeah. This is where if you sort of gave the image, you know, this landscape a bit more time mm -hmm. and, and, just, just looked at it slowly and studied a bit more and made sure your in-camera technique was correct. It could have been a far better image. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry about the cough, guys. That's all right, buddy. No worries, mate. <coughs> yeah. It looks. Do you, think it, do you think this was shot digitally or do you think this was? Um, a film? No, I think it was digitally. I think it yeah. was digitally by the look of it to me, anyway. Yeah. So what I, what issues I'm, do we find here, guys? <clears throat> well, <coughs> for me, number one, the the one that really stands out at the minute is this big bright area down here. Yep. Because to me, that should be the biggest focus mm. of the image, and all my attention is drawn down here rather than yeah. up there. So what's happened there? What's caused that area to do that? If you, well, it's if you're overexposed. An image... Yeah. It's overexposed in that area, and there's too mm. much, too many highlights going on down here. Really, I, th I think what was probably happened is they haven't exposed for the highlights. Yeah. Um, whereas I probably would have maybe exposed for the highlights and underexposed this so that this didn't really happen as much, because obviously the sun or some sort of light was shining down on here. Mm causing too much of a, a highlight going on. And it does, when you look at the image, there is a nice kind of white spot up here. So if you look at the two, it does kind of match up a little bit, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's too distracting. Yeah, too distracting. Too distracting. Yeah. 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 You'd be very careful it's... when you're shooting snow. You yeah. Know. The other, the other thing that I kind of notice as well is you've got, <laughs> there's quite, a, there's quite a few things. There's, you've got a path, that kind of leads up here, which kind of should be something that would really draw your eye into a scene. And I don't think there's enough focus being put on that little path. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really lead really... anywhere. No, no, no. There's no like real focus point or like a hidden 
destination. You know, like sometimes you can sort of make it like an elusive path. Yeah. You can't really see where it goes, but it makes you want to know where it goes. Mm. Whereas that just disappears up into the yeah towards that tree there. Yeah, which you, but it yeah. doesn't doesn't your your imagination sort of stops there because you don't really see. There's no mystery to it or, no, or an obvious subject for me. Mm. The um, other thing that really catch catches my attention is the imbalance yeah because you've got this big wide open space over here now not wide open space is is a good thing it works well as an open space but generally i personally would either want an open space on either side to make yeah. more sense and balance the image more or i want more trees over here to kind of balance it up it seems right right hand side of the image yeah. heavy to me it's mm. mainly, the... mainly that big sorry man you go no no you go tom i was gonna say it's that mainly that it's that big one on the right hand side that does yeah. it for me it's quite dominating in, in it's in too high frame. isn't it it's too yeah. tall for the rest of the image if it was smaller yeah. it would balance things out it would give you this 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 nice slope off to the side yeah, yeah. If it was, even if it was cropped if you cropped it in between that the, the <clears> two shrubby <throat> bits by the right hand side you know what i mean if you cropped it yeah down here mm. That's it. Yeah. yeah, down there, I think it would be a better yeah. image. Um, mm. Mm. But yeah, it still is quite right, right hand side heavy. Mm. Um, you could fix it cropping. You could fix it cropping, but obviously, the, the the major issue you've had here that you've you've um you've just you've taken a general exposure, which is in snow a big no no. You should un, you yeah. should under underexpose by a couple of stops at least. Expose for your highlights. Um, yeah. As a general rule, you should expose your highlights in, in any scene. Um, yeah. And you guys know you've been out with me before. I always underexpose by at least a couple of stops for mm. anything. Yeah. I because you can do. all, with modern day sensors these days, you can always, um, you know, bring back your shadows, mm. but you can't bring back burnt pixels. Yeah. No. That, yeah. You know, so this is a classic example of something you can't fix unless you crop the hell out of the image. Yeah. Which, at the same time, this might actually work as a pano because the foreground doesn't really offer that much to the image, doesn't it? So well, maybe no. cropping, maybe cropping it out, and um, let's have a look, hey, and crop out that big dominant tree on the right hand side. Yeah, you can see how overexposed that is when I take mm. it into develop. Mm. Yeah. So basically, if I get rid of that, and let's just have a look. So if we get rid of that and bring it up to there, for example. Yeah. yeah, move it move across a, a little room. bit. Mm. A little bit, little bit of room in there. And you want to move it across from the left? Great. Yeah, it. Now you, uh, no, you just, just take out that right hand side tree. Just move so it if in. If I go yeah. there, yeah, even not too much, too much. Go drag back a bit more. Yeah, even a bit more, bit more, bit more, bit more. Yeah, about there. That's good because those little tiny trees aren't distracting. And I'll just vignette it now, vignette that foreground to just sort of. Take away those burnout highlights, just a bit of natural vignetting. Yeah. Which I'll probably just paint in to the to the um to the foreground itself, but not the whole entire frame. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it dirty at the minute. Yeah. Just, just so. yeah. <clears throat> Look at that. Isn't that a difference? Yeah, that's you know, yeah. Huge difference. Huge difference. Mass, massive, massive difference. Just massive. simplifies it, eh? Just simplifies yeah. it. You know. It's the same image, it just shows you the power of cropping, doesn't it? Yeah. Same image. Yeah. Same image, we haven't modified it. Because mm. now that that path, I know it, the, the end point's still the same, but it's buried yeah, right in the corner. Yeah, but you look at that, that path now; it's in the right yeah. hand corner of the image, exactly, and it comes yeah. across. It, it actually is. We've turned it into a leading line now, too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Look yeah, at that. Yeah. I Isn't think that's that a world of difference. Oh god, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. difference. It does. Yeah. It just shows you the power cropping. Yeah, you've got to. You've got to. Sometimes you have to crop. Um, yeah. You know, you're out there. You're taking this big scene, and you don't see these fine little details in the corner of your frame. Crop them yeah. later on, see them, just sort of understand. Um, try and crop when you do. Don't be very lazy with your cropping. Try and use your correct ratios, especially yeah. to if you want to print. You know, respect the one by one, four by five, sixteen by nine ratios. Mm. And if they they don't quite meet right, right in, we can always distort them and drag the corners across a little bit. But try yeah. and respect your respect your ratios with cropping. It's important, especially when it comes to printing. But Wow, look at that. Isn't that lovely now, guys? Yeah, I think yeah. there's a world of difference. So it's the same image, grabs your attention, but this time it's like, wow, that's really, really cool. Because really to me cool now, 
more of the attention is on this group of trees rather mm-hmm. than that one that's that off is. to the right. And yeah, taking... the group of trees, that atmosphere, that lovely leaning line in the corner just gives you something extra. Yeah. That just um, works really well, doesn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Mm. Definitely. Uh, dead space on the left, sort of more mysterious that way as well, mm. isn't it? Well, it works a little more now because it's not quite yeah. as right heavy, right hand side heavy. So... <coughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Great like? image. Great image. Yeah. Definitely, um, it is a just, good image, yeah. just those things to look out for is just to, just to pay attention to the, you know things like your foreground and and just not letting it sort of overexpose like that because you have to kind of think that the brightest part of your image is usually where your eyes going to be drawn to and if there's nothing going on in that foreground and that's the brightest part of the image you're kind of distracting the viewer from the main point of the image. <coughs> yeah, that's right. Mm. Mm. Lovely, lovely. Just before we move on, oh, hang on. Uh, Josh comments for the for snow. I always set my exposure compensation to minus two, so the highlights aren't blown as metering averages the image. Mm-hmm. Mm. Thanks for that, Josh. Yeah, yeah, nice one. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, just before we go on and go any further, please get your images in for January, which is going to be the theme of reflections. Um, we'd love to see your images for then the, the quality of the work's getting better and better all the time so get your images in uh, to the official outdoor photography guide facebook group using the hashtag opg critique uh, right on to the next image which is the polar bear shop mm. and this one for some reason oh there we go Kathy Ligori took this image. I'll bring it up full screen. There we go. So wow. we don't usually we haven't done a lot of wildlife shots before, so we thought we'd include them more this time because there's mm. some lovely winter shots here. Mm. Yeah. So what are your thoughts here, guys? Wow, it's out of my comfort zone, really. A wildlife photographer, you don't do too much of it, but this is, is what it is, this image, isn't it? You know, I, I like... Carry on, sorry, oh, man. I was just going to say, I like I like the way that, for me, that they've, it's com- the composition here, it's quite quite like it, because it's mm. the space on the right, you know, it creates a bit of a story. You can see the where, where the polar bear is going to end up. He's, he's travelling to the right, which is quite nice. Yeah. It's, you know, he's, he's thought thought about that when they when they took the shot i think so yeah um yeah like what an animal they are aren't they yeah she's thought about that shot the kind of composition of the shot really, yeah really well. it's, yeah because it's all about storytelling isn't it? no matter what you're taking a picture of so yeah you know, it's not just about the subject is it in wildlife you know if you can create or capture some movement like with birds or mm. Or anything that's more fast moving, or in this instance, you can create a bit of a story by, like how she's done it here. Then, for me, yeah, that's all part of it. Yeah, do we know uh, where? We obviously don't know where it was taken, do we? Uh, I haven't got the information in front of me now. No, mate. no. Andre says. Uh, cheers from the foothills of the Rockies in Alberta. Love the discussion. And Josh just says I'd crop out the foreground for the foreground out. Funny enough, yeah. just before you got to that, I was going to say, for me personally, if I was going to, to do something with this image, I'd probably crop this out, this this whole area out down here. Yeah, it's a bit distracting, isn't it? And I'd probably take this top section out as well. Why, Paul? Because for me, I I just think this kind of shot, the simpler the better. For me mm. personally, I, I'm drawn to the polar bear is the main subject for me. Mm. This mm. this area down here, it's it's really badly out of focus, and it's not even it's not even like it's it's nicely sort of blurred out of focus. It's just it looks quite harsh, mm. and that's distracting. And I think that that is for me, taken taken away from the main subject. Yeah, because you're talking about it. You're talking about a scene in the snow. Okay, so we're yeah. not generally saying this is what you should do with wildlife because none of us are wildlife experts. But 
mm. do understand a thing or two about composition. Um, have taken a few photos of you, Paul, running through the hills, kind of like a <laughs> mountain goat. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's you're in the snow, so you've got this very soft mm. white snow haven't you and then you've got yeah. this detail in the snow which is the polar bear and now yeah. that's how it is now mm. because you've got this foreground and all of a sudden you've got dark brown sticks shrubs out of focus all yeah. in the middle it's just your eye just goes bang straight to that mm. and it doesn't sort of shift backwards um this image heavily cropped in not necessarily centered but definitely cropped in I'm just so, going to crop it, actually. I'm just yeah. going to crop it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you should do, really. Um, <coughs> this is a, se a second example today of how powerful cropping is, isn't it? I wonder what the my crop would look like too much. Mm. Um, Go 16 by 9, mate. It's a 16 by 9. Might be enough. No. No. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to take uh, take this off, and I'm just going to do it where I would probably be comfortable. Mm, mm. And and that top area there, yep, excellent. Seeing it, yeah. And to me, that's a world away. Yeah, <laughs> it's Another like image. that is how it should be to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. no doubt about it. Look at that. That that's that's um. Simple that's something, you'd, that's something you'd print and put on your wall, isn't it? Look at yeah. that. Because all image. that distraction has gone. All that same image, same image. That's what people are going to say. It's same image, just crop. Yeah. If something's wrong, look at what your distractions are. Look, if you've got useless information in a scene that just doesn't work, try and analyze it and try and understand, okay, if I if I was there, would have I zoomed in a bit more? You know what? You've got all these megapixels. Let's use them. Let's crop, mm. you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think now these days with with the megapixels, yeah, cropping. I like don't don't be afraid to crop. I mean, God, no. I've got I've got one point two, one point three meter prints on a ten megapixel camera from fifteen years ago that are perfectly fantastic. Yeah. On on a print, you know, we don't need all these mm. pixels; they're not necessary. So don't be afraid to, to crop in and lose mm. half of half of your information. It doesn't matter if it's gonna. If it's going to enhance the scene, look at that. You just move in yeah. a little bit. Um, that's great. You know, you could do a little bit, a few more things in editing, I think, to, to, to make it make that polar bear pop a bit more. Yeah. Probably but, increase um, the whites, eh? Probably increase the whites a touch. Yeah, that increase, increase the whites. Yeah, put some contrast kick into it. Um, yeah, it's quite yellowy. Yeah, it's nice. That's a massive, massive difference. I, I, some I always teach when I do workshops, mainly in the woodlands, but it's... Is I always teach people to work backwards, so like always go a bit tighter. It's a bit more so in the woods because there's there's more of this foliage, and obviously in the in your woods, more distractions. Mm. So by sh I, I always tell people to put like a longer focal length on than they think they might normally. And yeah. if you haven't got the, dist the distractions in your peripherals from the word go, you're less likely to end up having them in. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Whereas if you take a wider scene and then you think ah. Oh, Afterwards, yeah, these days you can crop, can't you? Yeah. But sometimes it is, you know, a tighter image. You will end up getting to this point quicker. Um, mm. But, yeah, there's no wrong with cropping, though, definitely. And also, also, I think it's worth saying that when you're out on field, it's worth analysing mm. what's in front of you and, and watching what's along the uh, the edges of your frame. Yeah. And try and get eliminate those distractions as much as you can while you're out in the field. I know it's not always possible, especially when you're taking wildlife because it's reactive and you're trying to just grab the yeah. shot while it's happening. But just kind of think about what the subject of your image is, what's important to you, what made you take the image in the first place. And if there's elements that are distracting away from that, try and eliminate them. Yeah, mm. yeah. For I would me, say yeah. crop cropping mm. is a... Is is definitely even more, even more important in wildlife photography. Yeah, um, yeah. Because, like you said, you sometimes you don't have that. You don't have that time to, or you don't have the right lens on at that specific moment. And mm. cropping sometimes would be your only option. 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah, well, what a massive difference that is. Hmm. Well, that just goes to show two images and all we've done is crop them and, yeah. and look at the world of difference it makes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Josh yeah. says, now the polar bear is the star. I'd also take it into Photoshop and remove all the black marks in the snow. Yeah, he's certainly the star now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that's a world apart from the from the image. It certainly before. is. Yeah. Yeah, like like you said, Matt, it just needs a bit of a clean up now, and yeah, know, be a, that'd be a a, a banger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Lovely image. Lovely yeah, image. Nice one. Well done, Kathy. Well done. Nice image. Um. Just before we move on again, I'm going to remind you that the next OPG critique is going to be revolving around reflections. Please submit your images to the official Outdoor Photography Guide Facebook group using the hashtag OPG critique. Right. I'm just going to go out slightly out of sequence so we haven't got two wildlife ones, one after the other. <clears throat> and go to this one here. Which is Adrian again. Yeah, which Adrian. Is, which is the uh, the iconic location of Trifan. Yeah, uh, I thought I recognised it from your... You went there well, not too long ago, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I went there not so long ago with Adrian, as a matter of fact, and uh, Matt Beach, actually, as well. Matt yeah. Beach, yeah. Yeah. So this is where? In Snowdonia? Yeah, Snowdonia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, hello. Mm. Awesome scene, isn't it? You know, yes. Yeah. From experience, it's a difficult place yeah. to to get something unique. Yeah, because you you're really limited on on where where you can shoot and what you can use mm. as foreground and everything. Yeah. Um, and these quite, yeah. these little waterfalls are used quite a bit, but I I love I love the way because he's used a wide angle here. It's got this lovely sort of curve to the actual water flow. It's got a yeah. lovely U shape. Mm. Yeah, because like you said, it does end up right down, off down to the left hand side in the distance, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's not yeah, exactly but... as if it just dis- it disappears off the left and gone. It, yeah, it, it goes down actually, here. Yeah, travel yeah. through the image. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't know how. Do you know how wide this is, Paul? I haven't a clue. I think it could be um, a pano. I think it could mm. be stitched. Because I, I really, li- I really like the scene, and I appreciate the work that's gone into it. Um, you know, the atmosphere is beautiful. Subjects are beautiful, and everything. But this image is interesting for me to look at. I had to look at it quite a few times to understand. <clears throat> that that I enjoyed it obviously when I first saw it, and then I looked at it and I thought something is quite not right. Something disturbs me, mm. and um, I had to keep looking at it and again and again and again to understand what it was. Then I realised it clicked. What what disturbed me? It gave me the impression that it was like. Um, and, and so I don't want to, um, you know, um, put the image down in any way. But this is this is something that that can happen. You know, Every, mm. everyone everyone does this, especially with. With panos or wide image shots, it gives the impression it's almost like a GoPro shot. It's just a little bit too warped, and you can see Bang it warped. when you start looking at fine details everywhere. You can understand that 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 um, reality is a little bit too bent. Um, mm. It's a little bit that that almost fisheye level, you know. Um, it's beyond that sort of twelve mil um, mm. where where things get distorted that they're almost. It's almost like you're looking through a marble glass, you know. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or or a, a a GoPro image, and I think it's just a little bit too distorted. This this mm. would for me. I don't know what the, what this area is like for me. I probably if I wanted to to capture as much of this scene as I could, I probably would have just walked backwards a bit more. Yeah, and mm. maybe just just zoomed in a little bit and and one walk back, being that close up. And I can appreciate why you wanted to be at that close up so you get all those foreground details in, but. Um, mm. Again, I'd have to go to this area, but for me, it gives that impression that it's just that little bit too, just a little bit too warped. There you go. It's probably the right word, which you can correct in Photoshop by doing a different crop mm-hmm. and sort mm. of squishing everything down a little bit. You know, you're doing the opposite of distortion, basically. So you're you're um you're basically pushing everything down a little bit to bring it back into perspective. 
but that yeah. would obviously change the crop. It would then become <clears throat> a very big pano sort of crop. Um, yeah. yeah. Apart from that, maybe the water flow coming in from the right hand side. It, it's um, you know, you do have that that mountain that's perfectly set at the top right hand corner, isn't it? And it comes sort of mm. straight down, and then the waterfall coming down too. But at the same time, it doesn't come from a certain angle or point of interest. It's sort of just, I don't know. It's it's hard to, it is. It's a beautiful image, but I'm talking about, like with images I talked about earlier on this evening, that when you start studying something, you start picking things up, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> this would be a classic yeah. example. If I took this image, for example, and I got really excited about it because I looked in the back of my LCD screen and thought, yeah, that's awesome. I've got it. I've come home, I've opened up Lightroom, all excited, and I start looking through my images, and I'm like, I've got to get to that one. And you get to it, and you have a look, and you go, oh, no. No. No, it didn't work out. And then move on, mm -hmm. because you start seeing those things when you start studying later on. And, um, yeah. I mean, that's that's my opinion. Um, someone might like that that effect, but as, as a general sort of <clears throat> something that you study at, yeah, just a little mm. bit too, a little bit too warped for for for, um, for my taste. Mm. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think it can. It's difficult. It's difficult with that this kind of shot because it, although the the distortions there, that distortion can also pull you into an image. It yeah. can kind of help pull you into an image. It got this effect that so almost like. Uh, it drags you, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that sort of works a lot of time when you're underneath a tree. You know, you got those classic Enrico Fossati mm. shots where he's taking them at 14 mils and you've got these yeah. branches that sort of drag you into the trunk. That's yeah. sort of drag you here. You're not getting dragged into a scene. It's just open. So you're not yeah. getting pulled in. It's the opposite of being pulled. You're being pushed away mm. into a warp scene. You're not being pulled into a subject. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, yeah I know you what you mean. You haven't got those corners that do pull you across. Oh, here's Adrian. He's just popped up now. Glad you felt the same as me. I always hated the distortion. There you go. Yeah. Like yeah. we're just saying now, distortion can work. It just depends on the. It can. It just just depends on the situation. I think. I think, I think the problem problem that I can see as well there is I don't know whether you you see the same thing, but the lake down in the bottom because of the distortion seems to yeah. go off downhill. <laughs> It does. It's, it's, it does. It sort of slopes yeah. down. Yeah, it's NQR, isn't it? It's it's not 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 quite right. It's something quite not natural mm. about it. There you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely a place. I would say, you know what, Adrian, if that's not far from where you live, go back, assess that scene again, step back a little bit more, try and find some different points of view. Try and capture that waterfall from a different angle with that mountain in the background. If you study it long enough, you'll find something, mate, because that mountain in the background isn't moving. Just got to mm. find the right foreground, you know? <clears throat> and you just might have to walk around in, in a 500-meter circumference till you find that, 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 um, that right foreground that sort of, you know, complements those beautiful yeah. mountains there. Yeah. Lovely mm. light coming through there above the hills as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It is nice. Yeah, I can't really add anything more to that, if I'm honest. Like you... Yeah, this distortion's a bit marmite in it, I think, yeah. Mm. The only um, the only yeah. other one thing I would maybe add to it is, for me, there's where that mountain is, Two things would make it a better image is maybe give it a little bit more time so you can actually get a bit of that mist coming round the mountain top, but also being able to see the top of the mountain kind of helps give it more dimension for my eye anyway. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, I would probably leave a little bit more room between the top of the mountain and the top of the frame. Just a little bit more breathing room. Personally. Yeah. <clears throat> I always like to see. I always think it's important. I try my best and 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 wait for that mountain to, so you can kind of see the top. Yeah, mm. yeah. Because I suppose it is a grand landscape. Yeah. I, I I I keep getting drawn back to the sky. That it's just a <laughs> it's a touch too bright for me. That area right. there, 
it's just I just keep my eye just keeps going getting pulled to it. Which what, bit? What's this, you... this bit here, where the sun's coming through. Yeah, it's just I yeah. don't know whether it's just. Uh, well, I don't know whether it's a, a no, touch no, bright really. Too, too bright, no. I mean, that is I mean, what your eye is eventually going to eventually, anyway, isn't it? Because yeah, oh, the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. If it didn't, yeah, if it didn't yeah. have that, it would be a very, it would be a nice image, but that it gives it. The it atmosphere. would be a bit flat without it, really. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't oh, have yeah. It's just... <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, good job, mate. Definitely not an easy. You can appreciate the fact that it's not an easy scene to capture. That's for sure. It's not no, an easy location. Not it's yeah. not an easy location at all. Yeah, yeah. Try and make sense of really. Hmm. I would might just have to come over and check it out. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to take it down there, mate. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Is there a pub nearby? Oh, there's bound to be. It's Wales. Yeah, they will be. Okay. <laughs> There'll be a pub okay. and a pint there. No trouble, brother. Yeah, mm. yeah, I would say mm. so. Good. <clears throat> Lovely, mate. Definitely uh, worth going. I mean, we've been a couple of times now, and I'm. I, I think this must have been either before we went last time or after. I don't know, but uh, mm. yeah, certainly different conditions. Mm. Certainly. Mm. Right, just before we move on, and we're getting through these tonight, and it's twenty-two already. Um, basically, I want to remind you all that uh, next month's critique, which is going to be into next year now, which is January, is going to be about reflections. So please submit your images to the official outdoor photography guide facebook group uh using the hashtag opg critique love to mm. see them um right i'm just going to move on to one that i i picked out and shoved in here i'm not sure whether you knew it was there or not but i i pulled it up because i quite liked the image <clears throat> and i thought it was an unusual subject matter as well it's something that a lot of people would generally try and cut out of an image mm. yeah and I like this. Simon Garrett took this. <laughs> yeah, Simon Garrett. This is very um, close to my, how my local area looks. Um, right. We live in a valley. Power lines. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. We live. Oh, I. Well, we live in a valley. Then the, the bottom of the valley. It's it's very picturesque. It's very pretty to look at. But there we do have the like the main lines that run from London. <laughs> and there's like, <laughs> there's like four of these, four of these lines side by side and they just go down like a motorway. Hence why you like the cropping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I did take no. a shot once from up, up from a hill vantage point like this. And I managed mm. to isolate one of these. So the top just <clears throat> comes out of the fog. Mm. Right. So I quite enjoy, I quite enjoy trying to make, man-made sort of unsightly things if you want to call it try and you know make catch them in a unique way so I, mm. when i seen this earlier i was quite excited to talk about it because that's exactly what you know it's it's um what we walk around all day isn't it um yeah i just think i love it, the trees i like the use of, of the something man-made because yeah I'm all too often trying to avoid power lines like the plague or remove them or whatever it might be because I you know I'm not a huge fan but when I saw this I thought oh that actually works quite well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 different, isn't it? Mm. You know. I like the fact that even Simon's been brave and just thought no. I want to take what I want to take today and he's you know Mm. Come over a nice shot. Put your thumb nice... over the top of them and tell me what you think. Stick your thumb over over the top of them. Everyone at home do this who's watching tonight too. Put your thumb over those main power lines and what what do you see? No, it's not an optical illusion. You're gonna start seeing a witch with a with a hat on <clears throat> and a broomstick. Mm. It's not as nice, is it? No. <laughs> yeah. That actually it's... complements the scene. Um, it does. Yeah, I quite like it. Yeah, mm. Mm. yeah, it's it's just a very soft pastel shot as well. It's quite in effect. The colours are just nice and ah, oh, well, fog's fog, isn't it? If you guys, yeah. if, they, if you got fog out there, just go out. Yeah. And shoot. yeah, If you open yeah. your window and see fog, you can just walk down the road a hundred meters and just find a mm. tree and just shoot it because fog just simplifies the scene and makes everything awesome, yeah. doesn't it? Huh? Yeah. yeah. 
don't 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 um, don't stay home when you see fog. Just run no. out the house. Just grab your car and <laughs> get in the driveway and reverse yeah. and knock over don't the box. Don't go to work. Take the day off. To, don't go to yeah. work. Yeah. <laughs> Saw a lot of fog out your way yesterday, guys. By the way, that was crazy. The the, the fog was just everywhere yesterday. Yeah. We yes. On the way out to Stansted Airport. My God. See where Lots we. Of fog. I was about to jump here, out the taxi. I just didn't have my camera with me. <laughs> up here, it's it, we don't get so much. Really, oh, mate. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, we We've don't had, get so much. Yeah. I mean, we we had some the other day. We had some nice freezing fog the other day, but I couldn't get out in it. But um, we don't get as much as you would think up here. No, we get loads. I must admit, because I live in the valley. See, it's got mm. get that big ch- temperature change. Is that because oh, where yeah. you are, Paul? There's less valleys, or? Well, no, there's lots, there's lots of hills and there's lots of open areas, but there's not. I, I don't actually know. I think it's because the hills hold hold the weather in. Right. Where we are, because where my house is, we back on to the fells and the hills behind us, and it, mm. we have our own weather pattern as it is. So I mean, okay. it can be bright sunshine here, and you can go five miles down the road, and it's thick fog. It's because yeah. we, it's quite because we where we are, we're quite quite high mm. so we're almost above it a lot yeah. of the time you have to get way out of the village to actually see whether there's fog there it's like yeah, empress field high. it's like empress field in italy isn't it huh yeah it's got a bit of yeah. yeah you just go over the mountain and the weather pattern just completely changes in a few yeah. kilometers yeah definitely yeah definitely so you know yeah. where i am like this looks the same it's like probably very flat vast open space and then a valley mm. So that the big weather patterns come in, they get they drop down in the valley, and then they're there all day, lots of the time. Wow! It just sort of gets stuck. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, no, a nice, all. nice um, <laughs> <laughs> nice image, Simon. I like your your um, <laughs> definitely your your, uh, your selective white balance too. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you it's got, got nice ones down in the bottom, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, no, really, really nice balance shot. Really like very peaceful image, isn't it? Mm, um, yeah. Simple and effective. Well done, mate. Yeah. Thanks yeah, for putting well that in for it, Simon. I love that one. Right well on done. Fantastic. Right, just before we move on to our last image of the evening, I want to remind you all that to get your images in for next month's critique, which is going to be on the theme of reflections. Since mm. we're all moving into the new year, I thought a reflection would be a good thing to move on to. So we're mm. going to go with that for January. Um, Right, I'm just going to move on to the very last image. Now, I said we weren't going to get Joseph on tonight, but I picked this image anyway. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I, I quite like this. So, Joseph Mark has been putting quite a lot of images in lately, and he popped this one in, and it kind of caught my eye. Mm. And it's got quite a lot of elements going on about it as well, if I just bring this up. <clears throat> So what are your thoughts here, guys? Yeah, look, I, I picked this for discussion. Um, so what's his name? Joseph, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Joseph Mark. Yeah, Joseph. You know, you've got. We've talked about your photography before, and I think you're doing a really good job. And you, you, for the short period of time you've been photographing, you do an excellent job. Mm. That's for sure. Um, it's good to see you're you're taking images of, of everything and you're experimenting with different types of subjects and different types of of uh, approaching post-production um so it's really really nice to see you're in this phase of trying to find what what attracts you into into landscape photography um and this is an example of an image where i think it must have been really really exciting to take this to to shoot this and and the scene is beautiful. Um, the way you've approached the light is, is really, really good. I love everything about it. Um, and then I see that foreground and I think that as my eye, and I'm, I'm talking about my eye here, I'm not talking mm. about everyone's eye, as my eye looks into those footprints, that pathway of the animal or, I don't know, whatever it is, a human being or, or um, a tractor or whatever it might be that's in the middle of that scene that sort of leads you into those trees there. Um, it's a little bit soft and it's 
been compressed a little bit too far down that foreground. I think mm. this image would have been a lot better and a lot more pleasing to look at and very powerful. Especially you look at the first, the top half of the scene yeah. is immaculate. Mm. Not I'm talking mm. about perfection here, but I'm just talking about so emotional and it's got so yeah. much to offer. <laughs> then you've got this this um this um this foreground area where the the point of view you probably the, the height of your tripod um, or the position you're exactly standing in caused you to sort of compress that foreground in a little bit too much. I think if you had mm. opened up the foreground a bit more and maybe did a bit more of selecting, selective focusing, maybe focusing on the first thirds of the image and don't worry about everything being sharp from, from the front of the scene to the back of the scene. You know, this yeah. could have been easily taken just with just one bang, one focus image, no photo stacking at all, mm. focusing your first third and just um, yeah, being up a little bit higher with your tripod yeah. it would have been a really, really nice. This sort of, this sort of, point of view would have been great if you had have had a polar bear in the background for example because you're focusing mm. on that polar bear you're trying to make all your attention just on the polar bear itself we're here mm. we're talking about a grand landscape so when you talk about these grand landscapes you have to kind of have everything in the whole entire scene mean something and yeah. for me yeah that foreground yeah it's just it's it's not the right angulation is it it needs a bit more to be a higher perspective, doesn't it? Just to open, give you yeah. a bit more breathing space. Can you see that, guys? Yeah, yeah I, I can see exactly what you mean because really this sort of plane of focus here is where you, where it's all nice and sharp and crisp and it, mm. it's lovely. And it would have been nice for this sort of out of focus area here to kind of slowly fade off into the background yeah. rather than yeah. being sort of in the middle of the frame. It needs to be yeah. the other way around, doesn't it? Because it's right on yeah. your face. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah, for yes. me. First thing you look at. Um, yeah, and like you said, you can achieve that by focusing and like Matt said, getting a little bit higher. Mm. Yep. You know, uh, kind of like the cropping, Again, you know, only a tiny little bit would have made a massive difference. Yeah, I mean, you could probably crop it, but the, prob the problem is with cropping it is, I mean, it does, it does fade out in the background there, but it's not going to have as much of a as much of a, a fade, if you know what I mean. That, that Oh, yeah, be, yeah. Mm. It's not going to be as subtle, is it? Mm. No, no. I like meant cropping. like um, I don't mean crop it. I meant like like the cropping technique that they impact yeah, yeah. it just by moving yeah. up like four inches. Oh yeah. Or, or in this whatever. case, if if in this case, if this is the final image and you had no other option, yeah, definitely cropping it, making a sixteen yeah. by nine crop, you'd yeah. be able to correct that slightly. But definitely, let's um, do it. Let's do it and show what we mean. So let's go a sixteen by nine. Even that's not going to really... It's not enough, is it? No, no you're going to have to no. really cut in to do that, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you just have to go back, mate, when it snows again and when you've got the same conditions. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, it may what never happen want, again, but... Um, what you want look, to happen is it should be sharper from this point onwards, really. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just that yeah. first third needs to be sharp for me. Yep. Yeah, I yeah. Totally, totally agree. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, under I understand, you know, you get to those scenes and I've made made the mistake and I actually still do it a lot now is that I want to make the foreground powerful so I keep my tripod low to the ground, but it's just not the right perspective yeah. and you don't realise until you open it up on the big screen later on that you've, you've, mm. made, an you've made that error. Um, yeah. And there is a way to help you, um, Mark, to avoid making these little mistakes is maybe in your case it's not a mistake. Maybe you like it. So if yeah, <laughs> if you think oh, these guys don't even know what they're talking about, that's fine because these <laughs> are just these. Are, this is us, and this is our personal uh, critique of what we think would would improve. Um, this is a classic example where you should be using your optical or your electric viewfinder, and um, and sort of really just sort of honing in, getting in nice and close, and looking through that viewfinder. And analyzing it through the viewfinder, not through the LCD mm. screen, through the yeah. viewfinder, and making sure that everything is satisfying. Because if you look through a viewfinder perfectly enough and sort of blank out, even just put like a jacket over your head, yeah, especially in this harsh light, jacket over the head, mm -hmm. look through the viewfinder, and make sure everything's just spot on, exactly how you want it to be, and then later on take the shot. It makes um makes such a difference. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I do that all the time, Freddie. 
putting the jacket over the head just because you know it's again it's like living in you've got to get, you've got to get rid of that distraction didn't you mm. and like which yeah. like you are right Matt like in, in these harsh conditions you are 100% going to get glare in your face and it's going to be and like you said you're going to be excited it's, it's, it's so many things that are trying to make you rush yeah yeah um yeah, it's not easy. And, you know, slowing yeah. down is a main key. It took me a long time to do it. Yeah. Slowing down is a is a main thing. And and just try and if you've got an idea for an image, try not to make that be the sole focus of of what you're doing. Try it a couple of different techniques. Try mm. it. Try it as we've said. Try make it, you know focusing closer in the frame. Try focusing further back so that at least when you get back, you've got all this information to play with. And you can yeah, see on the back of the screen what works and what doesn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if you've just taken that one version of that image, you're kind of stuck with it unless you've got to gonna go back again. Yeah. 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 How many workshops have you run or been on where whoever you're taking's you said, right, this is what what do you think about this? Yeah, got it, big bish bash bosh. Yeah. The bags, the bags back on on the shoulders, and you're like, right, where are we going? And I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> I, yeah. haven't my, I haven't took my bag off yet. Like it's yeah, yeah it's just Slowing down, and like you said, yeah, it's so, so important. You if you, know. if there's nothing, if there's nothing happening, and there's nothing moving, generally in landscapes there isn't, in, unless you're kind of around water, and that's ever changing anyway. Mm. Yeah, I find a good thing to do is to turn up, don't get anything out your bag, just sit down and observe the area that you're about to photograph. Yeah, last what, thing you get at is your tripod. The last yeah. thing. Yeah. And just watch what's happening. Watch where the light falls. Watch where the movement's happening. Just try and observe. And I think all too often, as photographers, we're, we're guilty of turning up, setting the tripod up, looking through the viewfinder, and we kind of live a bit through the viewfinder. Try and mm-hmm. take in a bit of the atmosphere that you're trying to photograph, and I think that will come across more in the images that you take. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's like when you watch the football and you see everyone looking at look, watching the football through their phones. <laughs> You're like, oh, put your phone down, man. Just take it in because it's, yeah. it's right in front of you. Um, yeah. Joseph, just one thing I'd like to say. When you're out on film, we're, we're talking about focusing in on the first third of your frame. I mean, that's not always the case. If we've got a protruding mm. uh, subject in, a, mm. in, our, in our focal range, it can sometimes, you know, like a huge boulder or something, it can knock everything that that whole one thirds out of perspective. But in an image like this, where you've just got a nice clean foreground coming in, trees in the background, and then you've got the the, the sky. Okay, um, yeah. don't think that you have to have everything in the image sharp from front to back. If you focus mm. in that first third, you're going to have the image sharp enough. And remember. To have something that's in your, well, not your immediate background, but, you know, sort of in your mid foreground, your late foreground, like those trees, Mm. if they're not perfectly sharp, that's good. And that's what actually gives atmosphere to a landscape Mm. because we don't see things that sharp 55 meters away. No. Okay. We see sharp things at our feet. You know, we can focus in Mm. them. When we look at a distance, things should be a little bit blurry. Not much, but yeah. just a little bit. And that adds to atmosphere. It adds to three-dimensionality of an image. And yeah, that's really, depth. really important. That's yeah, really, really important. Depth, am- amazingly. Um, <laughs> focus stacking <laughs> is something we probably only... I don't know, guys, how often would you do focus stacking? If you were to look at 100 images, how many of those images would you photo- focus stack? No, I'm not Ooh. very many. Not very many. <laughs> I'd have to be right up on a right oh, up on a subject to uh, yeah. to warrant a focus stack. Five it. for me, a handful. Yeah, I'll do I mean, it. I, don't yeah. don't get me wrong. When I'm out on field and I, and I I've kind of not entirely sure whether it's going to be yeah. what I want, I will do as I suggested before, and I'll take those images and make sure I've got them stacked so I've got the information. Mm. But nine times out of ten, I use the single image. I don't. I yeah. don't tend to stack them. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I I might only use two. I might just use the front, the foreground, and the mid. Mm. Um, and like you said, leave the background as it is. But um, yeah, I don't do it that often, if I'm honest. No, because no. like you said, like you you know, we are trying to we choose all these techniques with the contrast and like like you know, like Matt said, to create depth and 
cooler and warm tones and your shadows and your highlights to create that sort of layered. And then you're going to make it, you're going to flatten the whole perspective off by having it sharp front to back. Mm. Yeah. So kind of, they con- contradict each other, don't they? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Right. Great chat this week, guys, this month, in fact, um, some awesome images we've had submitted for this uh, critique, which was all about winter. Um, if you could get your images in for next month, we'd greatly appreciate it. Just let me come out of here. Um, we're going to go around the subject of reflections for the January theme. We're really looking forward to seeing your images for that. Thanks very much for uh, all your submissions for this month. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks very much. And we'll have a great Christmas. Have a great New Year. Yeah, if we don't Christmas, see you, yeah. I'll speak to you before. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Don't drink too and, much. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you all in January for the next critique. Mm. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Alton. Oh, Theo. By the way, Theo, we, I promise you I'll look over that image for you. I will, and we'll bring it up on the next critique. Unfortunately, we will. We'll, we'll do it in January. Yeah, we'll do it in January. Happy Christmas, yeah. everyone. Cheers. Happy Christmas. Take care.